Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. Grace Liu, PharmD. I'm founder and CEO of the Gut Institute. So today we are going to continue our series about holiday bloat, cravings, fad diets, <clears throat> how to plan your New Year's for the best wellness plan for vitality, as well as um, if you're looking for it, permanent fat loss. So thanks so much for joining today. Uh, let me know if you can hear me okay, because I have my little headset and sometimes it's <clears throat> on the rye. Um, how many of you tried out the tips from last week, um, adding in the macros like probiotics, fiber, fiber rich foods, fermented foods, and um, that does include fermented beverages if some of you enjoyed that. Thank you, Rosemary, for joining. So good to see you. And who ate smarter? <laughs> and boosted your oxytocin, which helps your vagal nerve um, and the nervous system. So when you have the best nervous system, you're also going to have the tightest non-leaky gut. A tight gut means a tight butt, right? How many guys agree? So thanks so much for joining. We're going to continue this um, topic because so many people during this past year, you know, gained 19 pounds or more or less or lost, you know, 10, 20 pounds in muscle. Um, and that, you know, can lead to atrophy. When we start sarcopenia, the lack of muscles, sarco means muscle, then we start to gain um, all kinds of the modern diseases like diabetes, metabolic syndrome, obesity, and then immune problems like susceptibility to viruses, autoimmune diseases, and many other things. So keep your muscles tight because then you also keep your microbiome and your mitochondria as best as possible. And so today we're going to talk about extremes a little bit. We'll continue these topics next week as well as we close out the year. And my staff will post some links if you guys are interested in the things we talk about here. Um, when uh, we go into extremes, you know, our body has to go into hyperdrive for hormones, including neurotransmitters and our main uh, living hormones, cortisol, insulin, um, and um, cortisol, insulin, and adrenaline. When it needs to go into overdrive, it starts to put a wear and a drain, right, on our <coughs> all our glands and endocrine glands, as well as even our gut, believe it or not, because our gut relies on these hormones for repair. Every day we use our gut, you know, when we eat four meals a day or four little meals and snacks a day, we have to process them, right? And when we're processing them, we need all our hormones to <clears throat> make the gut as healthy as possible, as tight as possible, not let those 100 trillion bacteria, right, and, and the yeast and the parasites go into the bloodstream. Um, when we look at centenarian guts, people who are really healthy, they're over age 90, 100, and, you know, they're not succumbing to modern diseases like diabetes, chronic diseases at, like osteoarthritis, um, fibromyalgia, autoimmunity, you know, cancers, diabetes or metabolic syndrome, when they're not succumbing to that, why are they so healthy? Well, they have a really great gut and they have a fantastic microbiome. They have all the species that we would consider keystone to healthy humans. They have the ABCs in other words. So A stands for acrobantia. This is what I've, you know, kind of put together because um, we uh, look at all the studies and research for microbiome, who's healthy, and there's about 13 species of keystone bacteria that all humans that are healthy have. And it's really ideal when we do testing, 16S, particularly when we can look at the species, not just culture testing, but 16S and whole genome sequencing, um, the second gen uh, type of sequencing, then we can see the species. And these are 13 species that are keystone that all healthy people have. I didn't used to have any acromancia. It was like undetectable. And I was able to resurrect it from 0.001%, you know, like million fold to something detectable. It should be about one to 5% of all guts. So that's A for acromancia. B is for bifido particularly bifidal longum. So guess what? People with longevity have bifidal longum in really high quantities, like 0.5% of all their gut species. So not as high as acromancia, but a little bit goes a long way with bifidal longum. And when we do stool testing, it's because we're not looking at actually the mucosal lining. It's actually at a higher percentage along the mucosal lining, not in the center of the the lumen of our GI tract, the stool part, right? So when we see it in the gut, in the poop, in the stool testing, we're only seeing a fraction of what's actually 
protecting us at the gut lining. So if we're actually doing a biopsy and we're scraping a part of your mucosal lining, we'd actually see a much higher, you know, multifold levels higher of bifidobacteria longum. B also stands for bacteroides. Most people have plenty of bacteroides. That's usually not a problem. It's usually half of the gut, half of 100 trillion bacteria in the stools. And then C stands for butyrate producers. Butyrate producing, in fact, clostridiolis. That's the C, clostridiolis. So this is just the, a basic microbiome 101. Please pick up our little booklet. Uh, my staff will put, put a little link there if you'd like um, to get a little booklet about the ABCs and how to um, look at it, you know, drill it down. Uh, when you do the Thrive Kit, actually they just got purchased um, and you know, we can we have different ways. Um, I think Microbiome Labs has a really great kit and um, some others other great kits now available. We do have a probiotic, so we're shortly getting it back in stock. It's called Equilibrium. It does have the C, butyrate producing clostridiolis. And if you don't, you can just take butyrate. We have it as a supplement. Uh, my staff will put a link about our dispensary if you want to check it out. Um, I've been talking about dosing, you know, when people have gut problems or if you're like me during the holidays, just gorging on gluten and dairy all day and sugar and having fun with people um, and alcohol and all that fun stuff, take some butyrate. I'll do like four to eight or even more than that. Let's see, I've done 10 or 12 capsules in a day when I'm, you know, just eating off diet, off schedule. And it has helped me a lot. I don't get so bloated. I don't get so overweight. I don't have problems with sleeping. So butyrate helps so many people. Uh, if your bacteria can't sustain it all. I also try to take a lot of fiber too. I've been kind of lazy and traveling, so I've been doing fiber capsules. My, again, my staff would put a link to fiber capsules if you'd like, prebiotic that are amazing, awesome, or you can mix your own. It's called bionic fiber. Um, it's step four of our seven steps to cure SIBO, or you can get our book and check it out. Um, step four is about how to feed your flora, taking prebiotics. And ideally you want, you know, you want to start low, go slow. And then once you're on a maintenance, you can do 10, 20 on a good day for me, I'll do 30 or even 40 or 50 grams of prebiotics a day, either food wise, like legumes and lentils and rice for me and some greens, right? And then doing a, a drink, a bionic fiber drink. I like to make it flavorful, you know, with some vitamin C, it's nice and sour, and then it like helps me get over, if I'm getting a cold coming on or I'm getting over a cold, you know, you can easily um, have plenty of vitamin C if you don't get enough of it from diet. So check that out. So extremes are not the most ideal. So again, you know, when we're going keto or low carb or you're cutting out any kind of macro nutrient, and again, I consider fermented foods, fermented beverages, fermented um, vegetables, and uh, prebiotics um, and probiotics in our diet, we just are so deficient on that. And it's really hard, it's really like a part-time job to try to get that in, work it in to the level that our ancestors had, our Paleolithic ancestors. Again, our Paleolithic ancestors probably were eating dirt all day and soil-based probiotics. Again, our microbiome mojo is coming back in stock, it's got the soil-based uh, probiotics, they're spores actually, and they last forever. And it's combined with our Bifida Maximus in here, a hundred trillion, I mean, sorry, I wish, a hundred uh, billion per capsule. And we overstuff it. There's actually 800, up to close to 800 billion per capsule when you first purchase them. And they last for a long time. They don't, don't, they don't expire really. So our ancestors really did have incredible diets. Um, did they live long? It's believed they did. You know, if they survive all the childhood diseases and accidents and other, um, you know, lethal problems, they were able to have pretty long lives that were uh, chronic disease free and um, mostly infectious diseases did get them. So I'm I am grateful for emergent medicine. You know, we are able to have surgeries and, all ways to save our lives. <clears throat> and then even um, with heart disease and chronic diseases um, of infl inflammatory nature, you know, we have so many different ways of interventional surgeries that can help. And even antibiotics for those life killing, you know, um, antibiotics can be life saving when people have horrible sepsis and other infectious diseases of the blood and elsewhere. So we utilize gentle um, programs and that's why we get really great gentle results. We go through four phases with clients. In our master gut class, um, we go through one phase. So instead of fad diets that are draining your energy, draining um, people's hormones like insulin, adrenaline, and cortisol, and creating more problems, including um, gut problems, when, you, when you're missing these hormones, your gut's gonna be like on the fry and cannot seal and heal, can't tighten. And this allows 
sadly, you know, different things to proliferate as well as different things in the gut to go into the bloodstream. And that's the start of a lot of disease. Um, fad diets also, you know, they just backfire. You know, people who do, like when I hear about a fruit, a fruit smoothie cleanse, you know, or um, just fasting forever and ever, water fasting forever and ever, you know, when I track these people later or ask them about it, they regain all that weight and now they've lost their ability, their metabolic <clears throat> flexibility. They can't burn anything anymore. And so they regain all their weight and then plus 10, 20, 30, 50% sometimes. And it becomes uh, really hard to um, have uh, really effortless fat burning. And this is just the way our body works. We have all these like ways to maintain homeostasis. And when we start to disrupt that too, uh, too excessively with extreme uh, situations, the body goes into like overdrive to protect where it is, where, it, where it's at, right? And we wanna avoid that. If we feed our body the right signals and we keep maintain those signals of um, plentifulness, abundance, and you know um, that there's nothing missing. You know, so that includes all your macronutrients, carbs, fats, protein, and your prebiotics, probiotics. Right, um, your body will get the right messages. Oxytocin will flow. You'll have like really flex metabolic flexibility with cortisol and insulin. That's the ideal thing. Your anabolic hormones won't get drained. You know. Um, if you don't have great anabolic hormones, then consider getting testing. You know, we do blood testing or Dutch testing. Look at your testosterone, look at your progesterone, um, and consider um, our Mojo program. We have Dragon Mojo and Nano Mojo, which are amazing to help stabilize and have effortless fat loss and help the hormones, the major hormones. And um, that's one of the best ways. Um, and if you do consider a fat diet, try to do it only temporarily, you know, maybe three days on, four days off, you know, do 70-80 um, uh, or 50-50, you know, and as soon as you reach your goals, you know, try to ease up a bit. Um, when people do certain fad diets, yeah, it's fine occasionally, you know, for women, because our hormones vary, uh, change and vary every day, there's certain times of the month that we actually do better, you know, if you're going to consider a diet like that versus other times of the month where our hormones may be lacking, you know, you're already going through PMS and other problems, you know, you don't want to add more stress with a fad diet or an extreme diet. Does that make sense? So if you want to consider it, that's totally fine. People do intermittent fasting. I would highly encourage you to consider also days that you overload on, on whatever you're taking out, carbs or whatever it is, fat or, or, um, or protein, because then you're feeding signals to the body that, oh, okay, everything is safe, right? We want our vagal nerve to be just awesome and flowing really well, glowing for you, and that will keep your gut tight, tight and you know sealed, sealed and healed for you and start to reverse um, any problems that you might have. Now, if you want long-term, you know, permanent fat loss, this is, uh, it's great that you're here because um, one thing we encourage is a couple things for permanent fat loss. So uh, one, I mean, I kind of went over these last week, so go ahead and watch our, our last um, class, I mean, the last uh, live if you want. But it's just, you know, eating for your type. You eat smart, you know, look at your hormones, look at your gut, uh, take into account the entire picture, right? And whatever's missing, Tr you know, try to fill it in, right? Um, the second is we want the best nervous system regulation. Um, oxytocin's one of my umbrella kind of neurotransmitter signalers, you know, um, that helps set the tone for our vagal nerve, which heals and seals your gut. No matter what kind of protocols you do with us, master gut class or pro probiotics, you know, galore, we call it the probiotic parade, you know, or, you know, bionic fiber or mojo, you know, if you have like a really great nervous system, you can overcome a lot and you can fake it until you make it, you know. Um, one thing, you know, we love teaching in our classes as well as uh, in our group classes and our one-on-one -on -one programs is safety, you know, and your balance of your nervous system. And so there's lots of exercises like vagal nerve exercises. We're going to soon add this stimulation for your vagal nerve in case you have problems there. Oxytocin exercises. Um, ways to assess adrenaline status and um, your cortisol status with a survey, an HPAT survey, uh, and a, uh, like we call it an adrenal survey, because so many people who have gut issues or live in this modern day or this past year, right, have nervous system uh, dysregulation. It's hard to avoid, you know, the anxiety or social anxiety or mood changes when you're not seeing your friends, you know, when you're, you know, cloistered in your own little silo um, or you're just so busy working and all, all uh, other things that come with um, modern living. So those are ideal, right? And then um, 
if you do do a fad diet, you know, just do it in the safest way possible. Um, and consider, because a lot of these elimination like fad diets, whether it's SCD, um, paleo, right, keto, low carb, what are the other ones? Carnivore, um, AIP, they're eliminating major food groups and major sources of fiber, prebiotics for your gut flora, and um, avoiding FODMAPs, right? We actually do need some fructose and other FODMAPs. These are, you know, short, tiny, tiny fibers actually for a lot of our gut flora. Um, so certain gooey fibers like inulin and others, they not only feed our good fiber, but they also are adapted. Um, they can feed actually the pathogenic flora. So I do believe in testing, don't guess. You know, you can do a stool kit or an organic acid to kind of illuminate, see what's going on more and do a lab consult with either me or my staff to learn more what you can do to have a better uh, microbiome. So when macros are taken away in a fad diet, you know, you want to look at why it may temporarily be helpful, right? Is it because there's a pathogen like Klebsiella citrobacter or candida or yeast eating that fiber, you know, um, or sugar or carb? And then how do you, you know, how do you manage that? So in our master gut class, we teach like how to manage it and why it's high. We like the organic acid test. So when you join the program, you'll get a complimentary organic acid test. And depending on which program you come in at, you also will have um, an IgG panel. We love looking at your immune system. So the IgG panel is a food allergen test. Plus it also tells us your immunity against candida and yeast, two markers. ASCA, which is anti-saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody. How allergic are you to your own yeast and saccharomyces, right? And the second is an anti-candida marker. It's an anti-candida antibody. How allergic are you to your own candida? We do need candida. We don't need a lot of it. Um, we're all born with some, and we want to maintain like a certain level because it helps us chelate. It makes B vitamins. It's really an amazing species. But when there is not enough good acromancia, no, not enough butyrate producing clostridiolus, not enough bifidobacteria longum, which again we find here, then candida can go kind of crazy. Or if it's not, or you know, if these flora, the keystone flora, like the 13 I mentioned to you, they're not fed well, you know, then again, candida will go hostile and pathogenic and super, super aggressive, where it's gonna make you tired, crave carbs, right? Get you fat and cause leakiness and cause cross-reactivity, which is also known as molecular, uh, molecular mimicry. I just came actually from A4M, a really amazing integrated conference, and what I learned there, my, I, my friends attended a, a talk, I didn't get a chance to go, but we see this all the time. People with chronic diseases, whether it's autoimmunity, cancers, or you know, diabetes, or high blood pressure, or you know, difficulty maintaining body fat and muscles, what's missing is bifobacteria longum. We have the highest industrial strength in our probiotic. Well, um, there was a study, um, some studies done internally with a company and um, pr some published ones on um, COVID. And those who are more susceptible to COVID and long haul was missing bacteria, bac bifidobacteria longum, just the longum. And we found this, you know, there's other studies I've talked about um, where in ADHD and Asperger's, when they looked at children who developed this susceptibility to a spectrum condition, uh, autism and Asperger's, they were statistically missing um, bifidobacteria longum. The incidence was directly correlated to how deficient bifidobacteria longum is. So this is for a neuropsych condition, not like, you know, just immunity issues, right? But we see this across the board everywhere. And the reason why this won't stay in a, in a gut perhaps is that there's too many overgrowths. So you wanna consider a program that's really safe and not gonna cause problems. And that's something like our master gut class. And we'll teach you how to look at the testing so that you can also implement this if needed um, and do it in the future for yourself. Um, it's super helpful. People tell us all the time, they feel so much better. They have more energy, right? They have, um, uh, the, the ease to burn body fat whenever they want, and they feel happier and more calm and uh, more, you know, all these amazing things. And it has to do with our microbiome. It's a huge surface area. You can't ignore it, you know. Um, it's as big as a tennis court. So it's quite a lot of space to take care of and manage and regulate. So we give you a lot of the tea, uh, key tools to regulate it, recognize what's going on, and to make it better once you know what's going on. So fat diets are awesome, but sadly, yes, it's you know taking out some parts that of uh, the diet that are that feed the microbiome. Some, of course, are feeding pathogens, and they can be helpful in the short term. But in the long run, you know you're going to run the risk of starving all your good gut flora, and then what are you going to do, right? Um, 
you can't just keep eliminating and eliminating and eliminating. It uh, becomes like a yo-yo diet scenario and that makes metabolism even harder to um, affect changes and starts to really drain the major hormones like adrenaline, um, cortisol, and um, insulin. Makes it super duper hard. So now I'll take some questions. Um, if you, when you're taking a macro out, just remember like, see what macros you can add back in. That's uh, one thing I was trying to get at. Um, so adding back in some kind of fermented foods or probiotics is really ideal. If you can't tolerate a probiotic, you're gonna run into so many issues, you won't be able to do a lot of healing. So trying to figure out which probiotics you, your body likes and what you tolerate well, where you see changes, that's where you wanna go. Sometimes it's not even the dosage either. We have like, for instance, the equilibrium is only one billion per capsule, but we see such great results with it. Um, obviously, if some people tolerate it and they can take more, uh, certainly we'll see even more benefits. Some of the benefits are dose related, higher is better, but not everybody. So if you guys have questions, I'd love to answer them. Um, if you need any more links, let my staff and I know, we'd love to post them for you. Thank you so much for joining. I know it's so busy right now during the, our, for this holiday series, the holidays are pretty hectic. I was actually trying to shop the other day just for some last minute things and I was like getting a headache. You know, there was parking, a line for the parking, you know, when you buy something, then there's a line for getting it purchased. It's like, oh, so crazy. How are you guys doing with all that? I hope you guys are done and no issues. Well, thank you so much for joining today. And later we'll check in again. If you have more questions and we miss them, we'll, we'll definitely love to um, add more information here. So thanks so much for joining. Happy holidays if I don't see you before the next one. And then otherwise we'll see you again next week. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.